Hello guys and welcome to the Raw Reality Podcast. Today we have a serious topic to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> You'll only get that if you're watching the video. 100% and you guys need to watch the video because we are on YouTube now. We are. So go head to our YouTube channel, Raw Reality Podcast, to get just like the emotions and the animations. We're very animated. We are. So it just helps. Welcome back. Also, I tell you what, those sunnies might be coming back on though because my <laughs> eyes are not coping. Tori has had a underlying migraine headache for the past few days and these lights in front of us are bright and they after are. every episode we record, she already has a headache. So I'm thinking today is going to be double. Yeah, probably just put those sunnies back on. So if you're watching the video, you didn't see me with glasses on. <laughs> but yeah, this migraine just won't... She won't skedaddle. No, and usually I get hit like hard and heavy and I'm bedridden, can't work, do nothing. But this time I've been able to like do bits and pieces, which is like great. But then I'm also like, fuck, I'd rather just have it over and done with for like, I don't know, 10 hours, sleep it off and then I'm good. Yeah. Whereas it's like, it's just like, it's just lingering. And I'm like, fuck off. I can do something, but I don't really like, it's like today going to the gym. It's like, oh, I could go. Yeah. Might feel worse. And then I'm like, I don't want to feel worse training upper body and then my neck, you know, gets stiff mm. and then it's like, fuck. Yeah. So still not sure if I'm going to the gym. Anyway, we'll talk about that later in today's <laughs> episode. But welcome. Welcome. 77. Sevens. No, Tori. No. 75. Oh. Actually, <laughs> we got a bit ahead of ourselves here. Shit. We're not far from 100. We're not far from 100. How many weeks would that be? If we're 75, that's 15 weeks. You can mask that. It's no, not 15, that's, that's 25, 25 weeks. weeks. Good mass. That's a fucking long time. <laughs> that's half a year. Okay, never okay. mind. Raw reality. Yeah, let you, me go because yeah. yours is fucking long. <laughs> <laughs> and we're recording on a Tuesday. Usually record a on Thursday. a Thursday. Yeah. So, let me just so we normally, it's only been a few days between recordings and I have about two weeks Sound feels like two weeks of yeah, stuff to get Yeah, and like into. last week we had a week between recording and had less. And now we've right. got like, anyway, whatever. Anyways, just listen. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to my weekend. I had a pretty chill weekend. Saturday was nice. Like, when did you leave? Thursday. Yeah. Friday. I don't really. Rainy know. morning. Oh my God. <laughs> I had the best Friday. It was actually, yeah, I did. I had like the slowest, most beautiful, wholesome morning Friday morning and I just like it was just raining and we laid in bed I think I woke up at seven didn't get out of bed till nine and then I just cleaned the house and then I was like I filmed like the whole thing and it's on my on my reel um I did some like filming for work as well but it was just like slow chill and I didn't feel bad and like just so I did a total of like 3,000 steps on Friday that is beautiful rainy mornings and it was like pouring so it just sounded good yeah you know I freaking love pouring rain it was really really nice and then we had an early dinner went to bed early what's new Saturday was super chill um I trained with Annabelle had a really good session and then Jackson went to like this footy thing and then I went to the beach with the girls like the girlfriends of the footy club and that was really nice. We just chilled out and like caught up because obviously I haven't really seen them since the end of the season last mm, year. True, actually. So that was good. Um, and then we came home and had fish bowl, watched a movie, and Funny. we're in bed by like seven. That, <laughs> that was so great. Nice. Sunday, a little bit of a different story. Yeah. I kind of woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That just happens sometimes. It just happens. It does. And like I woke up and I swear because on the weekends I allow myself to lay in bed and like go on my phone and just like chill out. Yeah. But I think. Well, Friday I did that and I was like so like romanticizing the fact that I was just like laying in bed, chilling and it was fine. But then Sunday, I don't know, just going on my phone just put me in a shit mood. Mm. I don't know why. Anyway, so then um, go about our day. Jackson was like a bit off as well and obviously he's been sick. So he's just like, he hasn't trained for three weeks mm. and like hasn't done footy and like w- hardly working and stuff. So there's just a bit going on there as well. But um. We went, I went to Pilates, which was like so, like such a good session. And then we got a sigh. Great. Like that's a great morning. Yeah. And then we went to do groceries and usually like, that's my me time. Like I just do it on my own. I go yeah. to Flannery's and I enjoy it. And you I romanticize just, like, it. I do. Yeah. Jackson decided to come because he was meant to go to a shoot that got cancelled. So he comes and he's just rushing me through my shop. And uh-huh. I was like. You can't do that. And don't say you're going to come. I've already prepared you that it's going – yeah. I love this time. I've told you. He said, okay. He didn't listen. He, he didn't was follow ru- the brief. He was rushing. And then, like, we went and did our fruit and veg and spent, like, 150 and we got, like, a huge box of fruit. Like, we filled the fridge. 
And then we went to Flannery's and spent 120 on like six items. So he was just off and angry about that. And then I accidentally bought $22 honey, which I thought was $12. But like honey is expensive and it I do is. know that. And yeah. organic honey too. Yeah. Because anyway. The bees are being put to work. Yeah, they are. Anyway, so it was just a whole thing. And then we went to Col- uh, Woolies to do the other shop because we do three shops. Mm. And he, I started reading the ingredients of the almond milk and he cracked, not cracked it, but he was like, why are you reading them? We drink that almond milk like all the time. And I was like, no, but I'm really looking into ingredients at the moment for my skin, for my health. You've been sick. I'm trying to help you also. And I was like, for my fucking skin. And I fully just like flipped it. And we don't really do this to each other no. ever. And then he just went silent. We didn't talk to each other for the next probably three hours. <laughs> Guys, this doesn't happen. Like normally, I feel like normally you can crack it. And then I'm like, oh, this is awkward. And then he's like, whatever. And in 20 minutes, you're so it's funny. Fine. You're joking again. Yeah, we like don't. This was literally like the first time we were both like angry at outside reasons, but took it out on each other. Yes. Anyway, and then so we're laying in bed that night and I was like, sorry for being grumpy. And he was like, sorry for being grumpy. And then we had like a deep chat about like why we were both grumpy and like it's just a whole thing. But it was just like one of those days. Yeah. You know? And the best thing, you didn't go to sleep angry at each other. No, we didn't. Love we didn't. that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And so I feel like Sunday and bit of Monday, yeah, yesterday, I felt like just not in a rut, but like just one of those days where I, well, on Sunday we were driving to the Woolies and I saw like a Macca's and I was like, fuck, like, wouldn't you just, they just want to go and get a Macca's burger. Like just fucking, who cares? Chips, yeah. Coke, give it to me. Yeah. And then, and I never like think that. Yeah. Like I never want it. I don't really like it. Anyway. I could fuck up some nuggets. It's been on my mind. Maybe we'll do a mukbang after your com. Yes. Like first time we've had Maccas in. Oh, I haven't had Maccas in like. Let's do it. Because people like would be like, years. sorry, what's happening? Literally. Yeah. Anyway, so and Jackson was like, no, not really. And I was like, well, I do. And I would love to do it without knowing what's in the food, what they fucking cook with, how deep fried it is and how bad it is. And without the guilt of like, you know, my skin breaking out or whatever. And I've just been like so on at the moment and because Jackson's been sick too, like he's back on all his supplements and trying to change his diet. Like he's gone from being vegan for five years to Mm. introducing chicken, beef, everything. He had his first piece of beef the other night. So proud of him. But it's just like a big adjustment and we're just trying to get each other to 100%. So it's just like you're feeling like you're constantly on and thinking about like everything that you're consuming in your body becomes consuming mentally. Yeah. And kind of like takes us through today's topic as well. But mm. it's just like it got to me so, uh, Sunday, Monday. And it's like a weird place to be in because I'm like I'm so grateful because I'm so aware. I'm so conscious of what I'm putting into my body. I have the wisdom, the knowledge about the wellness, health, holistic healing, all of that. But it's just some days where I'm like I would love to just eat that without thinking. Sometimes ignorance without is knowing. bliss. Yeah. Right? And I know Steph and Laura actually spoke about it on their podcast and kind of a little bit different – but I think it was like when they were on Izzy and Sam's <laughs> podcast and it was literally about, okay, they can launch all these huge projects now, but they also know what can go wrong. Mm. Whereas they first released their ebook in the very first program, they're like, Ing- ignorance is complete bliss. We didn't know what we're doing. We just went for it. So mm. much easier. Whereas now when you almost have too much knowledge, it's like, okay, well, this can go wrong. Then we have to plan for plan A, then plan B, then plan C. Mm. And like, that's kind of similar with you at the moment. It's yeah. almost like, okay, well, I know what I need to do, but then there's all these other underlying things. Yeah. And I know I will get to a point where I can have those little things without, like, if I look at Sarah's day, for example, like, she can now eat gluten and dairy and not stress about it. Yeah. Um, or she'll randomly have, like, Macca's nuggets and stuff and it's fine. And I have had a few people, like, DM me and stuff and say, like, they've been where I am and now they're, like, can totally eat, you know, yeah. whatever. So it's just that, like, phase of life. But it, it just, is. like, just felt like a cheeseburger, yeah. you know? Um... I had my business mentor call last you Friday. You told me about that. Oh, yeah. We haven't spoken about it. Mm-hmm. It was good. It was really good. It was two and a bit hours. Wow. Yeah. No. No, two hours. Yeah. And um, it was just like so good because she's a mix of like kinesiology. So she could still tap into my energy and figure out where my blocks are coming from and yeah. try and open me up a little bit more than what like just like strategically someone could do. Yeah. And so it was really, really good. And we just kind of went through my business plan structure. um, And we have like a five-step process to begin with. Um, So I'm just kind of trying to navigate through that. And then I had an exciting meeting Friday with the Gold Coast Gymnastics Centre. So I'm also kind of trying to structure that for what that is going to bring on. 
So I feel like it's like as soon as I get this, like it's just gonna go. It's gonna go. Yeah. So yeah, it's just really exciting. And I'm the more I like work on it, the more I'm like, okay, I'm ready to just like put it out there now. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, I also had a bad dream about Jackson last night that he was dying. Oh. Like really sick. And it was just like me and his family like just constantly crying because it was just a matter of days. That's horrible. And I haven't Googled it yet, so I want to know what it means. I think that's also just subconscious. He's been so sick for the past yeah. two weeks. And then I woke up and I was like, cuddles. Like I can never have enough cuddles. And then he yeah. was leaving for work and I was like, give me a cuddle. Yeah. Oh, um, I hate that. But I hate when you just like wake up in a panic and you're like, fuck. I also think your subconscious mind is ridiculous yeah it just basically picks up what's happening in your life and things that are coming up the past history and everything and it just like your dreams are basically what's coming into your life in a different way mm. Mm. well like if you're dreaming of well if you've dreamt someone has a baby or is pregnant it means yes. a new beginning or well, also for example and same as death yeah <laughs> interesting <laughs> there was um i well i'll touch this in my r and r but like i had a dream about my ex five days in a row Five mm. days in a row because of the weekend. And it ha- oh, since yeah. that happened, nothing. Nothing. So, like, it yeah. just, you just know. Interesting. Yeah. Um, But that's been me. That's nice. pretty much my last few days. Love it. Mm. You guys ready? No. <laughs> and Tori's like, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'll be back in five, <laughs> 10, 15, 15 maybe 20. 20. Okay, guys, I am so happy. I am just thriving at the moment. And this hasn't happened in, like, a fair few weeks. And there's just so many things that are going to go into it. Number one, we all know I went to Taylor Swift. I'm going to touch on that at the very end of this royalty because that's just going to be a whole thing. Number two, my cows are very high at the moment, eating 2,700 right now. So I am just like full of energy. Life's good. Things are going well. Had a great weekend in Melbourne. So just like all around vibes, which thank God, like finally, Mm. I feel like I've gone from being almost like burnt out, depleted, and now I'm like back up and ready to go again. Yep. So obviously went to Melbourne over the weekend. Now traveling on prep is hard. I'm going to keep that real. Like I, there were so many friends I couldn't see. I hardly spent time with my family. Like I was either at the gym, going for a walk, doing my cardio, posing or grocery shopping, meal prepping. Like mm. I literally could not do much, but I also know that that is just a phase of my life. And that is what I've planned for. And my family and friends like also all knew I communicated that with them. Saturday morning, woke up, did my check-in and I was expecting to have a low day because I wasn't training and it was also Taylor Swift. So I was a little bit nervous in the fact that Kells were going to be super low that day and it was going to be a huge night. So I was like trying to plan for that as much as possible. Did my check-in, body weight kept dropping last week, like kept hitting low after low and then I held my lows as well. So Beck was like, okay, I'm actually going to have a high carb day today and I'm going to pull cardio for a week to slow things down. And I was like, wow slay then she was like and we're also going to do trial carp up while we can because now you're ahead of schedule and I want to see basically how full you can get it's okay if you spill over a little bit um we just basically want to keep pushing 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 to see how much glycogen you can essentially hold on to and when you say spill over you mean in weight um in how I look so the weight doesn't really matter heaps it's basically like okay yep you look bloated now rather than actually muscles being pumped yeah so I feel like tomorrow will be really interesting so I had my normal high day on Saturday, which was 2,000 cals. Then Sunday, we went to 2,300. Then Monday, 2,500. Then yes, sorry, today, 2,750 with 400 grams of carbs. So we're going for it because my weight has only shifted 500 grams since Saturday. And that is over, that is like nearly (coughs) 1,500 kilos more. No. One, three, something like that. Just ridiculous amount more. And so my body's holding on to it quite well. Um, See how I go tomorrow because it's been a few days of high and like no cardio, but thriving, freaking Mm. slaying. So we love that. Have you noticed a difference just in like brain function? 100%. Brain function, mood, sleep, recovery, energy in the gym, strength in the gym. Mm. It just goes to show how important food is. And also like some people will do trial carb ups a little bit later in prep earlier in prep it's just basically where you're at and where you are with your coach so if you're competing and you're listening to this and you're like shit my coach isn't saying for me to do this like literally don't worry they all have your own plan you may not need to do it you may only do it like a few weeks out whatever it is you've just literally got to trust your own coach because I was not expecting it to be now let alone Kel's getting even higher today so Mm. slay love that then on Saturday 
I went and picked up Lily. It was my first time I've seen her since I left Perth in August. Which is your ex-boyfriend's sister. Yes. We are still best friends and we talk every single day. But I just love her so much. Both have the same passion about Taylor Swift, which made it even better. But basically, I... I'm like really close with my, well, not really close, but like I'm close to my ex's parents, obviously. I had known them since I was 14 Mm. and they used to live quite close to me, but now they bought a house about an hour away down at the beach. And I was like, well, I was going to pick up Lily. So I was like, well, may as well go say hi to them. I haven't seen them since before I went to Europe because obviously like in Perth and things, I have been so nervous the whole entire week, hence dreaming about my ex and all those Mm. things, just like so many thoughts driving there. I knew we were all good, like, obviously, but I just hadn't spoken to them. I was shaking, pulling up. Like, I was, like, almost crying before I walked in the door. And I was like, Lily, you don't need to cry. Like, you're good. You're so fine. Walked in there. The second I saw the dad, bawling my eyes out. The <laughs> second I hugged the mum, crying even more. Looked at Lily. She's crying, bawling. And I was like, fuck my life. Also, my ex is in Perth. So, like, he obviously yeah, he wasn't was there. The I don't even think he knows I went there. Anyways, and... That was a whole thing, but it honestly was, like, so nice. I think I kind of needed that closure in a way. Mm. Ever since then, felt so good. We literally just talked about my life, their life, all things, what's going on, and then just carried on. So it was really good, and, yeah, sometimes we always anticipate for the worst, and it was just Mm. really nice. So that was that. Then, (laughs) guys, I went to Taylor Swift, obviously, and it was the best night of my whole entire life. I'm going to say better than Mykonos. Tropicana. Wow. Yeah, wow. Because I could sing every single song and I knew every single lyric. If you were not a Swifty, like, I get it. And this conversation, you're probably, like, sick of it by now. You have one more weekend, Sydney. Everywhere I go, it's just people are like, I went to Pilates on Sunday and they were like, I did not realise how many Swifties there were. And then, like, no one in the Pilates room was a Swifty. And she was like, thank fuck. (laughs) I was like, good. Yeah. And, like, if you were in Melbourne over the weekend, holy shit, the radio station, 72 two hours straight of Taylor Swift 72 hours straight if you're like a regular trader doesn't give a fuck you're off it Mm. anyways so good like I was almost like crying when she first came on like just a good vibe and it's the fact that you can just like let go and not care Mm. like not care about anyone else it's like my inner child almost came out and I just like went for it so surreal she's freaking insane the fact that she can go three and a half hours three nights in a row then do that for pretty much like two years straight Mm. Like, however long her tour is, like, crazy. Best performance, just, like, oh, everything. I record, um, vlogged the whole thing. Promise I'm going to get it up a lot faster than all my other vlogs because I'm so excited to edit this one. Um, I'm going to obviously go through my favourite songs. So, Don't Blame Me. Oh, my God. Incredible. Then I also loved the little Fearless um, kind of era. Yep, that's what it's called, the era. And then Long Live. Love that song, too. Like, they're probably my favourite ones. And then... Oh, surprise songs. We were the first. Tori's like <laughs> sitting here. I'm just, just looking at me. <laughs> the middle. So we, I went to the second night and she does two surprise songs every single show because she obviously has so much music to cover and there's only so much you can do in the three and a half hours. We got the first ever mashup, Getaway Car, mashed with August, mashed with The Other Side of the Door. Holy shit. Crowd went insane. And then we also got This Is Me Trying. But yes. did is this the first time you saw her live? No. Is her so this was an Eras concert, so this yes. was covering all music. Yes. What was her last tour? Uh Reputation. So that was just like the one album. Yes. So yeah. all of her other ones have been like one album. And then the ones that she the albums she hasn't done since, she did like a few more songs from each. Got you. So like the Speak Now, she only did two songs, Long Live and Enchanted. I saw a TikTok the other day saying um something about a Justin Bieber Eras tour. I did see that. And you did send like, that to me. That, that would, would be, be a like, vibe. Mm. Yeah. That'd be unreal. Yeah. I would love that. Um, And then night three, they got Come Back, Be Here mixed with Daylight. And then they got Teardrops on my guitar. I, I can't, that, I think they won. I think they beat me. But it's either way, incredible because I can watch all of that on TikTok. Because I did download TikTok, guys, for the weekend only to watch Taylor Swift things. Because I had to obviously keep up and know what was going on. Of course. Of course. Um, Yeah. I was exhausted afterwards but honestly so so much fun that's all for me went ham on my social media I did not give a fuck about what anyone thought I just wanted everyone to see it and that was my weekend I also got a bed frame finally finally her second bed frame second if you know 
you know. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. And I made him help me build it up last night and he did an hour and a half. Yeah, it was very quick. So fast. All I have to say, spend some decent amount of money and it's actually so much easier. Did you do much? I put the washers on the nails. Oh, yeah. Bolts. Bolts. I put the washers on the bolts. Good job. Thank you. And that was that. He actually said I did a lot more helping this time than last time. Oh, that's good. And I said because I have – oh, no, the other time I wasn't even in prep. I don't know. But either way, have a bed frame, huge sleigh. That's my life. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> so I'm glad that's over. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I I really <laughs> narrowed that down. Yeah, you did. You did well. I also just want to say one more thing. You know how I said my favourite songs? The whole entire concert was my favourite song. I couldn't really choose. Anyways, mm. that's all. It did look like, I think the sunset also made it insane. Oh, yeah. It was really cool. So, so good. Yeah. yeah. And we have Tate McRae in November, which I'm actually really excited That for. will be unreal. Mm. Yeah. However, there's no seating. Yeah. Which is kind of annoying for River Stage, but still be good either way. Is River Stage? Ziggy. Interesting. Yeah, it's I know. A small stage. Yeah. Especially for Tate. I don't for think she knows how big she is. Yeah. And in like November, that's a whole other year of growing yeah. yeah interesting anyway yeah. we are moving on to our shower thoughts of the week and we didn't really have one until like well we did I just forgot I wrote it down yeah. and then we were trying to just like come up with a few things and our like producer was like setting up the cameras and we were just like we're, we're delirious yeah you know, at this point but we we're just like joking around all different things and he was like I had a really good shower thought the other day and he couldn't remember it so he brought no value whatsoever <laughs> yeah, thank so you. we're like so write much, them Dave. down when you think of them <laughs> Um, but this week is about the English language. Mm. English language, yeah. yeah. And how we just like add our little spice to things. And it's also learning the English language so hard. Mm. For example, knives. Yes. Where's the K? Why is the K relevant? Knives. Yes. How are you meant to know that if your like first language is French? Sorry? That makes yeah. zero sense. How am I meant to pronounce that? Correct. Um. I actually almost was going to say it wrong then, but choir mm. looks like chore. It does. Yeah. C-H, ch, chwa. That's, you'll learn you to teach C and H together as ch. Yeah. So why are we now gone and made it sound like a k? Yeah. Choir. And it's like, I know it depends what vowel or letters after it. It's so confusing. Yeah. So confusing. And then we've got, you say it. Cacao. Yes. Cacao, it should be cocoa. 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 Or I know that if you're American, it's like um, cocoa, hot, hot, hot chocolate. Hot cocoa. Hot cocoa. But it's cacao here, essentially. Yeah. Well, I know that's for a different powder, but still, like, so confusing. This last one, I'm out. This was the reason we thought of this. I don't know when I came up with it, but I was reading it. And jojoba oil. So we all know the oil that we, like, put in our hair. It's good for your skin, all the things. It is spelled J-O-J-O-B-A. So jojoba oil. Yep. <laughs> But it's pronounced jojoba. It makes no sense. No sense. I have another one. Yes. Jalapenos. Jalapenos. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But I do love the English language. We were talking about it before. And I remember like talking to my friends in like the UK or America or whatever. And I'd be like, oh, I've got heaps on today. And they're like, heaps? What's heaps? Or I'd say lots. They would have no idea what lots is. Yeah. And you just like, just pick it up. How about the way we say No. No, I don't know. I can't say. <laughs> oh because my God, Taylor Sarah's. No. Oh. You say the Taylor Swift one. Well, when she says like, we are never getting back together. No, I don't even know what one it is. My mind is just like kerfuffled. But basically when he says um, like, no, and you would have seen in my story, it's in my highlights if you want to go see. But normally she says like, no. And then they have like one of the dancers say it the Australian way. Mm. So he was like, like, no. I thought he said no, mate. No, it's like, no. no. <laughs> okay, this is the Sarah's Day one, and I. this is with her son Malachi, and I can't. Americans love or hate how we say no. No. My boy's accents are so Australian. No. 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 <laughs> You're so Australian. No. <laughs> yes, that is exactly how we say it. I just I love, love it. it. I love it. And whenever I put on my story, like when I dropped my coffee the other day, I was like, no. And then like the Americans who follow me are like, oh my God, this is so Australian. And I just love it. I can't deal with Australians in movies. Oh. But I overall love the Australian Anyone accent. but you? Yeah. When I'm like, it was a too far. There's a new movie out that looks really good, but I watched the trailer and it's Aussie and I was like, oh. 
Yeah, no. Nah. There's actually a few new good movies out. There's one with Zac Efron. Apparently, oh, yeah, I want to really see that. And I can't remember the others, but there's about three or four I watch the trailers of. Really? I have another one. Yes. We say yeah, nah a lot. Yeah, nah. <laughs> yeah, nah. That, that makes no nah, sense. Yeah. Is it a yes or a no? Yeah, nah. Yeah, nah. Nah, yeah. Yeah, nah. Nah, yeah. It's just like the best. <laughs> it is. Okay. Okay, moving on. So this topic came to me late last night when our recording got moved to today. And we're like, holy shit. Um, but I think it's very relevant, especially in this time of year, particularly. Start or end. Start or mind. end. Because like at the start, it's like go hard, burn out. And then at the end, it's like you've been grinding all year. Yeah. You're trying to like push to the end. So talking about like physical burnout and mental burnout, and I know it's something that both you and I have struggled with over our lives. Um, but I think it's so important that we talk about mental burnout because, <clears throat> wow, because it's just not really spoken about. Like physical burnout, I feel like burnout in general is just not really spoken yeah. about. But physical burnout is more, what's the word? Like more known, And I guess. You know when you're physically burnt out. You're yeah. exhausted, like you said, like loss of appetite. You're just like, wait. Yeah, no, you had heat. Oh, <laughs> English Lily. Headaches, stomach aches, fatigue, frequently getting sick as well, changes in appetite, your sleep, your recovery levels, just like yes. everything combined with that. And then we also go, okay, you're physically burnt out. Let's have a deload. Let's have a week off the gym. Let's making sure we're focusing on having a sauna, ice bath, massage. So all the physical things that are going to help you replenish your body. When do we ever really focus on mental burnout? We don't. Giving yourself a break mentally. We don't. <coughs> we don't. I'm really struggling. Yeah. Do you need some water? <coughs> yeah, Have maybe. A sip. So when it comes to physical and mental burnout. <laughs> so guys, just the backstory while we're laughing guys, right now. Guys, this episode if, if is I left, drink, right, so If I drink any more water, I'm going to piss myself. I really need a wee. Anyway. Go, t- go pee then. Do you reckon we can just pause? No, I think I can talk. Okay, okay. Let me just explain the bottle thing. Okay. So I went to pick up my bottle before Dean was in the room and- my straw was sticking out a lot, so it looked really long. And then I yank it, like, really aggressively. And he was like, whoa, like, that bottle has a fucking life of its own. And I just – anyway. That's girlhood, basically. All right, I'll be back. Okay. Let's just keep going to about physical and mental burnout. So, like I said, physical burnout is very obvious within your body. You know when you've reached that point. You know when you need to have a deload from the gym, all those things. Mental burnout is less obvious. We are constantly go, go, go in this day and age and especially society. They put this almost stigma around you have to be constantly doing something. You have to be constantly level up. If you're not, you're not being productive. If you're not busy, you're almost deemed as lazy. So we can take a step away from the gym, but I feel like we never truly take a step away from constantly up-leveling ourselves. So it's like when we go on a walk, we're listening to a podcast that's educational. You're learning about something. At night or in the morning, when it's your downtime, you're probably reading a self-development book or something like that who are trying to level up yourself. When you're working and you're on your lunch break, will your manager or co-worker may be speaking about a project. You're still checked in and it seems to be never ending. And then we end up procrastinating, right? We end up getting less set sorry less satisfied with work we get irritable we're disengaged from what we're actually doing we're exhausted or drained and then it's also hard to actually be productive you end up doing a task that should take you only one hour and it will take you three or literally half the day and that is when you know that you have almost like achieved mental burnout I'm just like pretty much discussing like the difference between physical and mental and how you know when you've gotten to mental (coughs) burnout and I think especially myself I achieved it's not achieving, but I got to mental burnout end of last year. And I would say yours was started this year. Yeah. How did you know you reached that point of mentally burning out? Well, I think I just lost, oh my God. <coughs> Sorry guys. I think I just lost all like inspiration and creativity Yeah. because I was like trying so hard and wanting to achieve and wanting to put everything in, but there was just nothing there. Yeah. And so I think it was like, I don't know, like I think I could, English. I think I have experienced mental burnout a lot more than physical in the last few years because I'm constantly trying to, whether it's work or health, it's like constantly trying to be better yep. and do more for That's myself. That's what I just said as well, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm very similar to you. The end of last year, 
I was just like constantly being like, I'm not doing this. I'm comparing myself to this person. Why are they leveling up? And I'm not okay. This is what I can do. I'm exhausted, but I constantly keep going and going, going. I implemented a physical deload, Mm. but when did I mentally check out? I didn't. So I actually never got to that point of full recovery until over Christmas where I took work off as well. And then that helped me mentally. Yeah. And I was speaking to Annabelle about this the other day um, on our walk. And it was like, we were just saying how in a job like social media, you don't switch off. Like you are constantly in your job because you're like, your life is on social media Yeah. for us, for example. And you're constantly thinking of what real comes next, finding new sounds, getting inspiration from reels. Um, when you're out doing stuff, I think I was speaking to Soph about this when she was like, I'm going to go away and like not film, but then it's like, that's work. And yeah. like, you also want to take photos for memories, but then you end up posting it. And it's just like, how do you find that balance? And I think when I was saying to Annabelle is like, we're, especially right now, because I'm feeling like so much inspiration. I, I worked through that mental burnout and now I'm in a really good position where I'm feeling so inspired to mm. create, which is amazing. But I do find myself constantly looking for sounds, um, just like jotting down ideas that I can do for like a new series. Like I've just started this skin series on my reels yeah. and people loved it, which is amazing. So now I'm like, cool, like that's done well. Like I need to keep adding to yeah. that. Um, and then you're thinking about YouTube videos because you've got to get them up weekly. Podcast episodes, you've got to get them up weekly. And that's like not just like about getting the camera out and recording or coming to the studio and recording. Like you're thinking of ideas, topics. has um, to be engaging, insightful, something valuable. that people want to listen to. Yeah. And get like all those different things. And let's say, for example, this weekend, I love like, don't get us wrong, both Tori and I love creating content, right? Mm. But it's just like putting another side to it, like fucking owl it's a lot mm. obviously it went to Taylor Swift okay so I was doing my best to soak up the moment which I absolutely did I'm really proud of myself for that three and a half hours so I did have quite a long time both but I was like okay I need to get photos to make a dump mm. and then I also am doing a reel about the whole night so I need to perform um, film the before and during then I needed to make sure that I had my stories up and then I was also doing a YouTube video so I had to film in landscape so I'm like yeah I couldn't just go and enjoy that. And it's like, like well, you know, you, we choose to do that. Absolutely. Like you absolutely yeah. chose to do that. But that's what, like, a, that's what yeah. the job is, yeah. basically. And I loved and posting you it. Loved people it. loved it as well. Yeah. But I'm like... And then you have that memory forever, yeah. too. Yeah, and then you take a step back and you're like, imagine going to, like, a holiday or something like that and no one knows and you don't take photos, you don't be post. Weird. So weird. Yeah. And yeah. I think, obviously, us just speaking to social media, but there can be so many times where... You might be really high up in a job and you just feel like it requires every ounce of you where it's not just like you go to your nine to five, you switch off, you go home. Yeah. And sure, there are nine to fives or jobs where you go to work, do your job and leave and that's great. But then there's also jobs in all different areas where it just requires so much of you, whether that's working late, getting up early, putting in more effort than what you're getting paid for or stuff like that. And so it's really important to understand when you're putting in too much. Yeah. But like you can still put in that effort whilst taking time for yourself. And I think something fell. Um, And so I think Alexis Fernandez did an episode on Sunday scaries. And I initially thought it was about um, like being hungover, but Mm -hmm. it was all about like Sunday. People get scared because it's Monday the next day. They're going into a week of work that they don't like. So it's like making sure you're having time during the week for yourself and like Potentially that even being Monday morning. Yeah. And like, because, and I know I do it, but I'm like Monday mo- or Sunday afternoon, I'm going to be setting up for my routine and then Monday it's like straight into work. Yeah. But it's like having a bit of time for yourself during the week, especially on a Monday morning where you can just like set yourself up in your head to prevent from the burnout, if that makes sense. 100%. And obviously I know that I completely had this flexibility and freedom to do so, mm. but I was having this conversation with a client um, and she also is very similar to me in terms of like an, um, a coach and things like that. And she was like, Monday, I'm stressed. I feel like I'm overwhelmed straight away. And I was like, that's how I felt every Monday. So what I did is I actually have no check-ins on Monday. I do not do programs. I do not do anything like that. Monday is actually my time where I set up my week and I almost like relax more than the weekend. Mm. I don't know why it works for me. And I, know, I love that too. And yeah. people always like, Monday's your go time. I'm like, I don't feel like I need to have a specific day for my go time because if I do that, it stresses me out and I just need to actually like productively plan my weeks that are going to work best for me. Mm. The biggest thing that I have learned over the past year is 
not doing anything can be equally as productive as doing everything at once. Yeah. To take a step back and to just actually let yourself rest is so productive in the fact that when you go back to that task, you can actually put your all into it. Your brain capacity is a lot more. You can think a lot more. So if you find yourself really struggling to focus on something and you're sitting there for three hours, you're scrolling on your phone and then you're going to unpack the dishwasher and then you can't concentrate, that task is going to take you so much longer than actually being like, okay, I'm going to allow myself two hours to do that. I'm going to have an hour break now, completely not think about, not do anything do what I want and then I'm going to come back and smash it out. Mm -hmm. So much more productive than being like, I have to do all these things right here, right now. Yeah, 100%. And I I did that um, Sunday or Sunday afternoon. I was like, I really want to watch a movie that just like doesn't require much brain capacity where I can just like sit, maybe cringe and watch. And I found the perfect, it came off my TikTok. I watched it on Amazon Prime. It was called The Other Zoe. And it was just like this like cringy, like high school love that, it was just a great story and I could just sit there and like reply to messages but also just like chill out and watch and like turn my phone off at the same time yeah or turn my brain off and I think as well acknowledging that I think at this point in time in our society it's like we're so into um, educational podcast YouTube videos and it's the information out there is like about constantly learning and constantly educating yourself around whatever it is that you're interested in. And I think that's great. And it's such a positive and powerful thing, but when it becomes detrimental to you and like taking on too much, that's what I felt like probably towards the end of last year. And so I wake up in the morning, I go on my walks, you guys know. And if I'm not feeling like I can take on information straight off the bat, I'm listening to music or nine times out of 10, I'm listening to my inspirational (laughs) playlist that I just freaking love. Yeah. Um, and it just allows me to just like let my thoughts run, yeah. feel into my body and not try and take on information because it's what everyone's saying. And we for the do. sake of it. Yeah. And exactly. It's like being busy mm. isn't always productive too. Yeah. If you're constantly being like, like it's always this stigma around if your friend's like, oh, what are you doing today? And you're like, oh, I only really have one task today. You don't really want to be like, oh, I'm just creating one program yeah do you know what I mean and then they're like oh she's not busy she's not working hard enough and then you could be like oh what are you doing she's like oh well I have this and this and this and this and this but then it's it's also like like we've created our life and our structure to only just have one program today 100 but it's also the matter of like okay you may only have that one program but that could take up three hours of your day Mm. that you have absolutely put your all into it and then you allowed yourself to breathe the other times and then tomorrow you can more focus on that task and sometimes actually setting yourself specific tasks to do throughout the day it's not five different things from five different areas it's like okay today instead of like let's say you have a nine to five job right and you do like social media on the side but then you also want to read your book then you also want to start youtube like there's a lot of things going on Mm. it's like okay i know mondays i'm going to spend editing tuesdays i'm going to spend reading my book wednesdays i'm going to go for an afternoon swim so it's like you have one task after work rather than be like okay tonight i'm going to read my book edit youtube and go for a swim yeah. That's overwhelming, right? Yeah. And it's setting those one things because you're actually, one, going to be able to enjoy yourself a lot more, concentrate a lot more, and the stress within your body and mindset is going to decrease so much. Yeah, because if you've got, you've got your nine to five work and then so from five to nine p.m. is you time. And so if you, like a little said, if you're adding in the swim, the book, and the social media, you're rushing through to get it done for the sake of getting it done because, yes, you want to, but then you're not enjoying the process of doing it. Yeah. And I remember I had one specific client who worked a nine to five job and she was building a side business, a side hustle on the side. And um, she was trying to do so much that she just got like fell out of love for it. Yeah. And then, so it was like about pulling back to do less, but it allowed her to do more yep. because she got to enjoy what she was doing. And then it started to progress quicker because she was putting more into the littler task that, Pushed it faster. It's also sometimes if you write a to-do list and you look at to-do list and you're almost brain dumped on that. And it's like, this is everything I have to get done. It's so unrealistic. Mm. You're not going to do it. So you almost look at him like, oh, it's not urgent. So I'm not actually going to do all that today. You kind of tick a few things off. And this is what I've been getting in the trap over the past few weeks. My to-do list has been brain dumping rather mm. than actual to-do list. You need to, to have do a list. brain dump and a to-do yes. list. Yes. So yesterday my to-do list was so realistic. And I was like, I know that I'm not going to be able to do two things that I want to do, but that's later in the week. Mm. So I completely pushed those aside. This is what I need to do today. I had like five specific things, smash them all out. And I was like, wow, I actually knew that I had the capacity to do all those five things, tick them off rather than having 10 or 12 things on my to-do list where you look at it and you're like, God, like I'm overwhelmed. And you almost like put it completely to the side. You're like, well, I'm going to go unpack the dishwasher and 
clean out my wardrobe instead, mm. right? It's like too overwhelming that you completely dismiss it. Yeah. I always have on my notion one page for brain dump and another page for to-do list. So generally I'll go in and add to my brain dump of all the things I think I need to get done for the week, whether that's invoicing, content, editing, whatever that is. And then I'm taking from that and adding into into my days and I'll only do one day at a time. So I'll yeah. do Monday the night before, Tuesday the night before. So I'll do I'll do tomorrow's tonight. Yeah. Um and yeah, it's like Lil said, if you've you know like you realistically have the capacity to do those five things and then it gets to that day you can tick them all off and you're like, fuck yeah, I'm gonna have a little break and then try and get in two more. Yeah. So it's like you felt accomplished already for getting those five done without putting the pressure on yourself of getting the twelve things done. Yeah. And somehow this turned into like a to-do list fucking, (laughs) anyway. But I think like overall with physical and mental burnout, like it's a freaking real thing and it can like block you from so much. And at the end of the day, it just comes down to giving back to yourself. Yeah, It's like you can't, the famous quote, you can't pour from an empty cup. And like we, I make sure, and Jackson always says that I do it so well, is to slow down to speed up. Like, it's just the biggest thing. Like, I know I have to have my me time in the mornings or my day is thrown off and I'm on edge, not feeling, you know, in my center. And I think, like, it's so important. And it takes time to, like, figure out what works for you and what fills your cup up. Whereas now, like, I have just have a list on my phone, which you can also do. Have a list on your phone of the things that make you really happy, the things that make you feel good. And that could be cleaning your car, listening to Taylor Swift, getting a coffee at a cafe, going out for lunch, going to the movies. Like, have the list of things. And then when you're getting to a stage where you're like, oh, I'm feeling a bit like I need some me time, go to that list, pick something that you can fit in and take, like go do it and just enjoy when you do it because there's nothing worse than being like, oh, well, I'm not feeling anything. Like I need to go do something that could just be laying on in bed watching YouTube. 100%. Which I'm probably going to do tonight. Yeah. I had this conversation with my dad a few times and if you feel like you're burning out, right, and you're like, I'm doing all these things, I'm stressed – and you have external people, example, maybe some parents or friends or grandparents and be like, oh, well, when I was your age, I had to do all that plus this, plus look after myself, plus this, right? Then all mm. of a sudden you're like, oh, well, maybe I'm not, maybe my, how my thoughts and feelings aren't actually relevant. Right now in society, life's like full on. You are exposed to so much, exactly like you said. And dad's yep. like, honestly, fuck growing up right now in your day and age because you yep. constantly have to be on. You constantly have to be up leveling 24 seven. And yes, we may have done all these things when we were growing up, but there is a whole added pressure on you right now. And especially in like, like not to be Debbie Downer, but like the economy and things like that. Like mm. it's hard and it's stressful. So it's I also like recognizing that. Our 20 year, like two decades there yeah, have been the hardest because there's been so much transition. Yeah. And I think, like, our parents, like, it was tough, but it was, like, good tough. It was nice. Yeah, completely different in a way. They had no social media. Yeah. So, it's, like, what they grew up with. But also the economy was better. Yeah. But it was also, like, okay, they actually had, like, a lot more, like, war and things like that. Yeah. In that sort of way. But... That is like, what are we actually talking about right now? We are <laughs> rambling. But do you know what I mean? Yeah. Completely different ways. So if someone is comparing how they grew up or their current life, don't make how they're feeling less relevant to how you're currently feeling yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Yes. <laughs> We're not talking about the war anymore. Because <laughs> no. I was about to say our kids' generation, I think is going to be better. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, how to slow down. Did you touch to on the down. um s- the symptoms of mental burnout? Yes, At I least. did. Okay, cool. I sure did. Great. Okay. How to slow down. I, first off, this is like number one. It's changed my life. Sleeping in. Just sleep. Sleep. Yeah. It is the biggest game changer when it comes to physical and mental recovery. Your body needs to sleep an adequate amount of um, hours a night to recharge. And I'm not talking one night. You can't catch up on sleep one night. Yeah. It has and to be it's few. Like, even little things like I, if I get good sleep, my skin is better. Yeah. Because if you're having shit sleep or not many hours of sleep, that leads to inflammation. Inflammation leads to so much shit in your body. Mm. Whether that be bloating, gaining weight, that could be skin flaring up, like mental health. like Brain infl- capacity. Brain capacity. Inflammation is huge. And the biggest thing to reduce that is sleep. It is. 
Yeah. Like I just can't stress that enough. And I literally have in the brackets, I don't care how good the sunrise is. If you're not I feeling not good, okay. <laughs> you need to sleep. And for example, right? Yesterday and today, yesterday I didn't put an alarm on. I went to sleep late. I was like, I'm not putting an alarm on. There is no she way. She flew in late too. Yeah. I was like, whatever time I wake up, that is when I wake up. It's when my body needed. This morning I set an alarm for 6 a.m. And I know you probably think that's still really early. I live in Queensland. It's not early. So <laughs> that's, half the day's gone. <laughs> Melbourne, really early. Yeah. I didn't get up to like 7, 8. Literally. Queensland, completely different story. But I was like, I know that I need enough amount of sleep. I don't care if Tori is going to watch the sunrise. I don't care if it's the best sunrise I've ever seen in my life. I know, mm. unless it was Thursdays. I know yeah. I need extra sleep and that is what is most important. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. The second one to that is being choose select tasks to do during the day once you're done, then yep. relax. So like what Lily just said before, what you have capacity for. And this is providing, obviously, we're lucky enough to have flexible jobs where we're choosing what we do in the day. But this can also be outside of your, your job as well. So it's like adding those tasks to the time that you have. So if you, you're working a nine to five and you've got an hour in the morning, and an hour in the afternoon, what are you going to fit in realistically that are the tasks that you want to get done and once they're done like let yourself like chill for a second yeah but if you're like I'm done I want more then do that too yes exactly it's yeah. seeing how your body feels some days you may have so much energy utilize that yeah. do more some days you may feel so burnt out because your day was huge also utilize that in the fact that I need to rest and recover today I'm actually not doing anything after work yeah just seriously listen to your body when it comes to that yeah number three set boundaries with yeah. yourself if you say you're switching off at 8 p.m switch off at 8 p.m mm. i don't care she's how calling you out deep you are in the algorithm on tiktok <laughs> get out yeah <laughs> switch it off just do what you say you're going to do and i'm a big believer in that don't tell yourself you're going to switch off at 8 p.m and then not switch off at 8 p.m you like change it to 8 30 if that's the case exactly or nine. be realistic with mm. yourself and you're the only person that can keep yourself accountable as well no one else in the world can but you and i actually said to someone this morning the biggest factor of self-love is self-discipline yeah it truly is well it's even like my weekly recovery routine is two saunas and an ice bath I didn't get it done last week and I've done it every week since the beginning of the year and I didn't do it last week because I had calls and meetings in all the times that I would usually go but I've already made sure that I went yesterday after my Cairo I've got Cairo again on Friday I'm going after that and I'll do my ice bath yeah like I have to time block those times, even if I'm like, oh, I need to do this or record, that'll happen after. Yeah. Because I know how good that makes me feel. I know how good my sleep is after sauna, my skin, like that has to be a priority. It does. Yeah. Next, doing things that take your mind off work and the go, go, go mentality, which is just so important. And I, was it this year or end of last year where, um, I think it was my kinesiologist reflected to me. She was like, do you actually like stop this thinking? Year? And I was like, no, actually don't stop thinking mm. about it. And so I had to implement a few things where I was like listening to fun podcasts. Yes, because like, fun. Oh, I love yeah. fun podcasts. So like Inspired Unemployed where you don't have to fucking be listening intently and you can just have an actual laugh because they're hilarious and you're not trying to like take on information and, you know, mm. figure out how to use it or whether that's like implementing something into your routine. Like you're actually just listening – for fun or you're watching for fun or you're going to play tennis or going bowling like take actually taking your mind off whatever it is that you're doing I love that because I've recently not recently the past year I've been reading so much more than I have my whole mm. entire life used to hate reading not a self-development book person may pick up one here and there this year I definitely have like I wanted to read two this year self-development books but I love fiction. Like mm. romance novels are my jam because I'm not thinking about anything else but that book. And it's not like watching a movie where you can go on your phone and do things. You have to think. You have to be so like involved in the book and that is all you can think about because your hands are holding it and your eyes are reading it, right? Mm. You can't do anything else. And that's why I love that. And I find that automatically slows me down. Yes. I do want to find like for nighttime specifically because Jackson and I just get into bed and we just scroll. November nine that I've just finished reading so good okay 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 next as I mentioned sauna ice bath massage just recovery recovery standpoint. is always yep. just good for your body yeah and if you haven't done it go and do it go and do it yes next one brain dump or journal to get everything out of your mind so it's not cluttered I think this is a great way if you are feeling stressed overwhelmed you're just like anxious Get everything on a piece of paper, in Notion, on your notes, whatever it may be, a list of what you have to do, and then almost 
I don't do this, but like Tori likes to do it. It's like journal your thoughts out as well. Mm. That significantly helps you. Yeah. I go through phases yeah. where I'm like loving journaling and then not. And sometimes it's about picking up the page and just like writing what's on the top of my mind. Yes. And then moving on. Yeah. That's as easy as it, as it can be. Brain dumping is the best yeah. strategy I've ever implemented. I literally have a tab in Notion that's just like get everything out that I have to do. Yeah. Even if I don't get to it, it's just good to have it there. Yeah, because then you can just go back and remember things. I just, even if I'm cleaning the house, I'm like, oh, I need to do that. I'll just quickly put it in my brain dump. Yeah. So you don't forget. Um, lastly is being present with what you're doing, watching a movie and don't go on your phone. Yeah. These kind of go like hand in hand. Yeah. But I think it is important. Like some movies you're going to go on your phone because you're like, oh, I need something on in the background while I yeah. do something on my phone or laptop or reply to emails. But sometimes also have a night where your phone's upstairs and you're actually just watching the movie or you're being present with your friends or your partner or whatever it may be it is also important to switch off in that way 100 percent. just lastly before we go into our raw reflection but a lot of um like mental burnout physical burnout can lead to something like chronic fatigue so it can become well it is serious in itself but it can become really serious and not that jackson has chronic fatigue but him as an example he got sick november last year and kind of just got better got back into things and continued on and it's led him to being sick again and so it's like your body is going to give you all the signs oh I have this really good quote why you find that it's almost just proving using Jackson's example he didn't change his actions after he got sick the first time so the universe was like hey buddy you didn't do what I said you needed to do so here you go again and if you don't change this time it's going to lead to something worse yes so the quote is if you listen to your body when it whispers you won't have to hear it scream oh good is that I love that and I just was like Fuck, because any little inconvenience in your body, whether that be acne, bloating, like that's your body giving you a sign and it takes time to figure out what it is. I know that. But if you're going to continue to ignore, it's going to continue to get bigger and worse. So now we're trying to figure out what's going on with Jackson, whether that he does have something like glandular fever or chronic fatigue because he hasn't implemented things, you know, and he can handle a lot. Hence why he's able to like get back up and go again. But then he gets hit hard. Yeah. So it's like, this is enough's enough. We need to get him back up 100% and healthy but um, basically chronic fatigue is a disease characterized by profound fatigue sleep abnormality ab- well there you go a word that I can't say ab- <laughs> Monality. Yep. No, no. <laughs> you guys know what I'm saying it's abnormal pain and other symptoms that are made worse by exertion so yep. muscle and joint pain confusion forgetfulness anxiety excess sleep etc yeah so you're doing very little tasks. You're getting very, very tired. Yeah. Um. So things like that. So it's just like something to be aware of because it can lead to that. And like things like chronic fatigue is hard to diagnose. Yeah, it is. So it's actually, you can't. And it's also treatable, not curable. Same as glandular fever. Wow. Yeah. It so like dormant in your system and then can kind of come Yeah. Out. So like if I get super run down, I, my glandular fever flares up real quick. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah. Hope you got something. Hope that you was take a good some episode. I did yourself. like that. Yeah. But for this time of the week, we do have two questions today, actually, that we will briefly go over our raw reflections of the week. We love you guys sending these in, so definitely keep them coming. The first one, which is such a good one. I'm looking to get to know myself better. How would you recommend doing that? Love this. Mm. The best thing you can do is spend time with yourself. Yep. And so many people are afraid to. Because they don't like where they're at, how they look, how they feel, whether in that's in their body or in their head. And I know because I've been there. And now spending time alone is like the best thing that I can do. I didn't realize how many people don't enjoy spending time alone. Mm-hmm. You need to be your best friend. Mm-hmm. And there's a difference between being, I think I've spoken about this previously, but being lonely yeah. and then also actually just spending being time alone, alone and yeah. like not isolating yourself. But enjoy your own company. Do things that make you happy. Don't worry about anyone else. If you want to go to a specific cafe, everyone's busy that day. Go to that cafe. Go do that. Go If there's a mountain you want to go climb, safely go do that by yourself you know like you can if you want to go to sydney for the weekend oh my gosh so fun by yourself yeah like just go do it 100 percent. and for example like i haven't said this anyway yet but i'm looking at doing america yeah in a couple of months by myself yeah because i want i've said this year i want to do a little solo trip um but doing doesn't have to be to the extent of going overseas yeah but doing things on your own and start small if you're not used to it or you don't enjoy it start small and progressively build yeah because it's honestly 
the best and way to do it. being in social groups constantly, you almost don't know what you like because you're so conformed into just agreeing what they're doing and then you do what they do and you're like starting to fall off their own opinions and things like that and you just almost like follow the trend mm. to fit in in a way and that's not coming from a negative standpoint at all. It's just reality of being in a friendship group or spending time constantly with someone. It's like when you're with a partner or your best friend, you start to pick up what they say and mm. you start to say it and you start to conform to that type of person they are. So it's like, okay, you actually need to take a step back, spend time alone and figure out your own little quirks and things like that yeah. by yourself. And the more you spend time alone, the more you get confident within yourself. So oh, even yeah. just like what you said, it's like spending time alone to learn what you do like, how you respond, how you actually act. Yeah. And then being confident in that to bring that into your social group. Yeah. Because that is you. That's who you are. Yeah. Love that. Love. Number two is how to be patient and wait for the benefits of improving daily habits. It's a great question. That is. And I feel like this is really directed to you right now in a way that you're just like, you need to keep going to see the long jeopardy of results. Yeah. If you expect results to happen overnight, it's not. It's mm. straight up not going to happen. It's like I'm talking weeks and months and people look at that and they're like, my God, why would I want to put weeks and months into something that like that's just going to take forever. I want it now. Okay, but how about in a few months time when that time has actually passed, you could you either nothing. be so far ahead or you could still be at square one. Mm. Start now and you won't actually even second guess it in a few months time when you've just been incorporating those habits. Well, I think if we're still on the page of like, it'll happen overnight, like you're sleeping on your results. Yeah. Because you're not, you have to accept that it's going to take time no matter what you want. Like, unless you want to cut your hair, that's going to happen <laughs> yeah. overnight. Like, nothing worth having is going to happen overnight, if that makes sense. I also think it's a, if it's such a hard habit for you to sustain over a long period of time, well, then it's not realistic. Mm. You shouldn't be like, oh, my God, I have these three habits. How long is it going to take? Okay, well, why are you doing them? One, if you don't enjoy them, if it's that difficult for you, change it up do smaller steps in a way where you don't actually think about it day to day mm. and then they're just going to accumulate over time and actually become second nature to you that yeah. in a few months time you're like oh shit I've been doing this for three months and not even realized yeah and it's even like I'm going to use like my weight loss yeah. journey as for as, as an example which I'll do a full episode on but it's been 18 19 20 22 3 to 4 6 years like since I very started going through that um whole weight gain situation and so if I didn't start somewhere with that, and don't get me wrong, there was times where it was like 12 weeks on, I don't know, three months off, and yeah. then six weeks on, two years off. Like, do you know what I mean? Like there's times where it's been so up and down. Look back, I'm like, I never gave up. Yeah. Because yes, there was down periods. Yes, there was up periods. But I look back and now I'm able to finally be in a position where I'm like, I know my body and I know how it works and that's because I've put in five years of work and five years sounds fucking scary. Mm. So if I had, a, if I sat here today and told my 18 year old self, it's going to take you five years, I would have been like, see ya. Yeah. But it was never about getting to where I am right now. It was just about feeling better. And for me in that moment, it was going on a walk, going to the gym. Yes. So it's like the moments of feeling good like those are the daily habits that I had to implement because if you're doing, if you're trying to implement habits, like you just said, that aren't making you feel good, then what's the point of doing it? It's not going to be sustainable. Yeah. But it's like, okay, yes, maybe we don't want to go to the gym every day, but we know we're going to feel good after. That's what's going to get you there. Or it's like, okay, today I don't feel like going to the gym, but how else can I move my body in a way that's going to be feel good? That's going for a walk. Yeah. And so it's always having like, you know, if I want to feel good, it's this, this and this. If I want to eat good, it's having meal plans it's having structure it's having um meal prep in the fridge if it's having good social life it's having plans in place to be able to stay yeah. to so it's just always having like somewhat of a structure and a plan to stick to those habits and then at the end of the day it's like we said it comes down to discipline like if yeah. you want something bad enough you're gonna have to go through some tough times to get it that's yeah. inevitable but if you're not willing to put in the work then you're not willing to have the prize period Wow, I love that. I also just want to add one more thing. I My biggest kind of like way to view things is think about what can you implement rather than what can you take away. Mm. If you're like, okay, I really want to, I don't know, drink more water, for example. Or like, no, I have an example. I want to cut out my soft drink. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't say I'm going to cut out my soft drink. That's going to be really hard for you to sustain. It's a negative. Yeah, it's a negative. Think about, okay, I'm going to focus on having three liters of water a day. And then you're actually going to be so full from the water. If you've ever gone from having one to three, you actually will notice yourself slowly cutting out the soft drink without meaning it. Or if I want to focus more on my um, not having chocolate at night, 
Okay, mm. don't think about not having chocolate at night. Have a different dessert that doesn't involve chocolate. Be like, okay, what dessert I'm going to have instead? Those little habits help you so much. Think about what you can add in to your life rather than take away from it. Yep. Just lastly, before we finish up, I saw a really great TikTok on chocolate. Mm. And it was, you know how honestly 99% of people will try and not buy chocolate so they don't eat it. And then they, when they get it, they're like, let's eat the whole thing so it's gone and I won't eat it again. Yep. I saw a TikTok and it said, you need to buy 12 blocks of chocolate and have 12 in your house at all times. Yep. So when you finish one, you replace it so you always have 12. Because if it's always in your house, it doesn't become a treat. It doesn't become special. It yep. just, it's something that you're always going to have in your pantry. You get to eat it when you feel like it. It's not put on a pedestal. Yeah. So it's like, well, we're always going to have freaking bread in our pantry. We're always going to have barbecue sauce in our pantry yeah. just keep the chocolate there yeah just have it there in the corner always and if i always like to put it up the top where they can't really see it or like on the side where i don't open it and just see that straight away yeah but like that's definitely helped over the years but just having stuff there that you think is your fear food like have it there i agree instead of making it making it that you're gonna fear it i agree if that makes I sense love that yeah I love anyway, today's episode like, that was so good considering we were meant to record in two days time Oh, sorry. We've done so well. We have. Yeah. As always, guys, if you want to get involved in the Raw Reflections, please DM us or email us, which is... Connected to our bio. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, as always, share us on your hot girl walks, hot girl days, your me time, whatever yeah, it is that you do when you listen to us. Thank you so much. And we'll be back in your ears for another episode next week. We love you. Bye. Bye.